Another lead leaves 343. Xbox research survey about Halo Infinite gets leaked out and Tim the Tatman begs for a Halo Battle Royale. All that and more in this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. And that lead dev we're talking about here is Kiki Wolfkill. She's been there since the inception of 343, like back when they supported Halo Reach. So for that early, that's what we're talking about. Her role for the last few years have been head of transmedia. She's been the person in charge of a lot of, you know, pushing Halo beyond just the games itself. She was actually had her hands very deeply in tied into the TV show, which I'm sure a lot of people not too thrilled about, myself included. I thought the TV show was all right. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot better though. You guys got to check out Hex Gaming. The Hex Gaming are basically a company that modifies the real deal controllers for PlayStation or Xbox and they make it into whatever you'd like. You can choose a decal, your colors on the joysticks, like literally every aspect of the controller, you can decide what you want to look like to have your ultimate gaming experience. The controller that they sent me is the Ultra X controller. Now the really cool thing about this, it has these paddles on the back, right? As you would expect any good controller to have. The thing is though, you can have six different profiles you can remap these paddles to. And it's all color coded on the back. So all you need to do is just double tap the button, change the color profile, completely different remapping for those back buttons. And since this is a high-end gaming controller, you also have the concave or convex sticks you can have in your controller. And you can also have the long or short versions. Personally, I like the long version right there on my right stick. It gives me a little bit extra travel distance so I can have a little bit higher sensitivity. You can even adjust the triggers on it. My triggers on this are like basically pressing a button. It's not even like a trigger pull anymore. And I love that. So if you guys want to check out Hex Gaming yourself, well, check out the pinned comment here, here in the video or in the description to get yourself 5% off when you use my code Kevin Coolx at checkout. Plus I get a little kickback and help support the channel. But let's get right back into those details. This slipped a little bit under the radar as it looks like it happened back in November when she made this switch of now being the head of Xbox IP expansion and entertainment. This of course kind of ties into what we saw earlier with like so many of the layoffs happening and Joseph Staten leaving 343 to become part of Xbox's uh, publishing team like he was previously. But Kiki wasn't just involved with the TV show, she was involved with a lot of the books, a lot of the comic books as well, which have actually been very successful and very well received by the Halo community. So she's actually done a pretty good job like, expanding Halo beyond just the games themselves. This could involve a little bit more of the restructuring that we're kind of seeing right now with 343 and how they're kind of probably doing a little bit more of a reassessment of what 343's role with Halo going to be. And it seems like they're kind of divvying out the work that was all on top of 343's shoulders, which obviously has seemed to be too much for one single development team, which I would probably assume. So as well as 343 in size comparison to like other major publisher studios, is actually much smaller to like games like Destiny, Call of Duty, uh, I'm sure like Respawn as well on top of that. And yet they're still forced to develop just as much of a product as these other games that have way much of a war of a workforce. So Microsoft has taken a new approach to how they're gonna be developing Halo moving forward, which is probably gonna be ultimately a good move moving forward. We've seen again from what Pierre Heinz said about 343 continuing to work on Halo with those two sentences, not exactly super convincing to me, but at least I reassured that. I made a video about this earlier, I'm saying the interview with uh, Phil Spencer with IGN, stating that they're gonna continue on with Halo and Xbox. So I can totally assume that. Like I, whenever I heard the news about the layouts, I was like, well, 343 is still there. We still have all the plans for this year to make Halo. Halo isn't dead, Halo's not going anywhere, but I think we're gonna see a very different style of development when it comes to Halo games moving forward. I highly doubt 343 is gonna move forward with a 10 year plan with Halo Infinite. I think that was a big assumption with given the state that the game was in. But of course, once I get some more details about what's happening with Halo's development moving forward beyond just this year and what the larger story is going to be, then I'll share with you guys here on the channel. Now, a massive leak recently just happened involving Halo and Xbox, a survey that was given out to people who signed up for like the survey program through Xbox Research recently received one and it got leaked out to Twitter. And now that I looked at it and saw that it was actually, this is confidential information information like this is not supposed to get out there but somehow it did so i'm gonna kind of like toe the line a little bit i'm not gonna give exact details of what they stated um but they definitely provided a lot of questions that seem to kind of question the future of halo infinite some of the questions that were provided talked about like the communication with 343 if you're satisfied with it essentially uh the big question which i thought was very odd is saying like are you done with playing halo infinite which i think most of us who are watching this video right now you and i 
We're still playing Halo Infinite, more or less, or whenever something good or cool happens with Halo, you know we'll be jumping it back in. But uh, we're not quite sure exactly who these surveys went out to, but we can assume that they're probably Halo adjacent players, you know, not people are jumping in constantly, but people are interested with the franchise. And it's very interesting that they phrase the question like, are you done with Halo Infinite? Which is such a like YouTuber title kind of thing. Because from my experience from, you know, playing games online, being a part of social media for so many years, so many people go online saying, I'm done with this game, never coming back to it. And then like a cool update happens and they're right back in it. Especially sending out the survey right now after such bad news has been going on about Halo and the long drought of this season two content drought that we've been dealing with for so long. I'm sure a lot of people would say, yeah, I'm done with Halo Infinite, just to prove a point to Microsoft, like, yeah, you should have messed up so poorly. I think a better way to phrase that question is like, are you likely to come back to Halo Infinite? Do How often do you play Halo Infinite? I think phrasing the question in such a negative way during such a negative period, you'll get an overwhelmingly negative response. Hey, I used to be part of like a research team at Microsoft as well. So I, I kind of understand this whole process. They asked another question about like, what kind of classic modes would you like to see come back in Halo Infinite and the ones that were listed all the classic modes you can probably expect to see or see requested in the comments down below which if you guys have any requests for classic modes to come back in Halo Infinite let me know in the comments down below I might even make a video about it I see it in my comments all the time people saying like we want the flood we want firefight we want this and we want that but my biggest question is like uh, do you really want it as in is this something that is gonna keep you coming back to Halo because of this singular mode? I think we all can agree that with Halo Infinite, things got stale really fast. And I think the main cause of that is because the release of Halo Infinite and the content that we've been playing with for the last you know, year plus has been, well, just your standard Halo experience your team slayers, your big team battles. Nothing new to the franchise really, no new experiences. So say if you bring back some classic modes that we've known for the last 10, 15, 20 years, is that gonna be something that's really gonna like boost up the player base and get people excited about playing Halo again? And honestly, I would have to say no. I think the biggest thing is that you wanna try to get, you know, the general gaming public excited about Halo. And I think the way you do that is create a whole new experience. Now, we have heard about the leaks and rumors about the Tatanka Battle Royale mode for over a year now. That actually, it's been like officially a year since that leak actually came out at the time of making this video. I covered this in a previous video, but Phil Spencer talking with IGN said that they were talking about like what the future of Halo look, is looking like looking forward, especially Halo Infinite, saying some rumored, some announced that we'll be working on, and they're very excited about the plan moving forward. So, I mean, things that are rumored right now with Halo Infinite, that's gotta be the Battle Royale, right? Oh, we've also seen leaks and rumors when it comes to like the Flood returning with season four, extraction mode i'm pretty sure when phil spencer talks about rumors involving halo infinite you know it's going to be the big one it's tatanka the battle royale and that's where i think the big home run is going to be for halo infinite if it's going to have a resurgence at any time it would be that uh recent leaks and rumors that we've covered on the channel here suggests that the tatanka battle royale mode is coming out in early 2024 likely probably march at earliest February timeframe. We'll likely see the Tatanka mode get revealed in June when it comes to Halo Infinite, unless they want to shadow drop it like they did with Hi-Fi Rush. But of course, once I get some information about it, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. And while we're talking about Battle Royale, Tim the Tap Man, that's right, one of the biggest streamers out there, talked about Halo and a Battle Royale. And this is what he had to say. I want to play a Halo Battle Royale. I I'm craving or I'm selfish to have the opportunity to play a Halo BR because I think it could be insane. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I that's why I'm even saying this. It's because I, I want it. I want to play that. That game could be crazy. That's what I mean. And it's like, and I said it earlier and I'll say it again, if they had that opportunity at the forefront right now with the space of everything, can you guys imagine if there was a Halo BR right now and we were playing this Warzone 2, what would you be playing? Give me the answer. Me personally? If there's a Halo BR right now in Warzone 2 with the state it's in, I'm playing a Halo BR. Obviously, this is just one person, but we've seen many top streamers that they're talking about wanting a Halo Battle Royale. Now, we've also heard a lot of people talk about how uh, the Battle Royale genre is dying and, you know, extraction shooters, the new wave, Halo is going to come to it a little late. Well, you know, he talked about the current state of Warzone 2 right now, and it's not exactly terrible, but certainly could be better with a lot of changes coming to Season 2 here in the mid-February with Warzone 2, making it more like Warzone 1. 
and a lot of players out there not really liking the slower pace, more methodical style of it, which personally I've really been enjoying. I've talked about it on the channel here as well. Actually went on to my community page here, guys. Want to catch these servers when they go live? Make sure you subscribe to catch them. And I asked which map do you think is better? And 72% or with a thousand votes coming in said Verdansk, but interesting thing here. When I asked this community two months ago, nearly three months ago, about which map was the better map, 65% with over 3,000 votes said Al Mazra, the current map in Warzone 2. So it kind of just makes you think like, is this more like a gamer fatigue kind of issue or is the map really not as good as Verdansk? Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. But the round it back to what Tim the Tatman was saying, we've seen Dr. Disrespect talk about this. We've seen Nick Merckx and pretty much every major streamer out there who plays Battle Royales, mainly the Call of Duties or the Apex Legends, even the Fortnite stuff that they've all said they wanted a Halo Battle Royale. And that would be the cool new experience that is pretty much a guaranteed success, I would say, for a Halo game. That one, I was talking about earlier, creates that new experience we have never had before in Halo, which I think Halo Infinite's sorely missing about. Two, has a fan base that people know that they want it, and three, will cause a huge population boost to the game, no matter what, even if it's good or bad. People are gonna flock to a Halo Battle Royale. And with a completely different dev team, certain Infinity, working on this mode, it could be something really special that we could expect to see be pretty cool. I mean, certain Infinity has done amazing work with Halo content, like all the H2A maps, which all look phenomenal and play out great, were made by certain Infinity. A lot of the best maps that have been going through the Halo franchise ever since 343 have taken over, were made by Certain Infinity. The lead person at Certain Infinity is Max Hoberman, the guy who basically created Halo's multiplayer experience. But as always, I'll let you guys know more about Halo news on this channel.